it's important to remember some material properties uh, and flexor strength. It's, it's a good way of thinking about that. It's not the only, of course, you de depending on the material, have different properties about flexor strength, about compressor strength, shear strength, different, different properties of materials. But here we can evaluate the properties of materials because when the manufacturer tells that you need some amount of resistance for that material, sometimes if you adjust it well, it does, it's not necessary. What I mean is we don't need a, a, a high, a so a very high strength like some zirconia monolithic abutments can provide because we don't have so much force in our system and if you have it and if you know how to adjust the occlusion you don't need to have just that resistance in one tooth you just have to share the load sharing the load every material actually can work but the important thing is how to adjust that for example here we see that the flexural strength is, is measured by megapascals and force measurements are, are, are measured by newtons, but what does it mean? I mean, we have to translate that for non-mathematical non -mathematical meaning. What I mean is one megapascal we can translate by one newton by square millimeter if you know how to adjust and if you share that load in a lot of different teeth and sharing the load and just not only one square millimeter but like more than one square millimeter per tooth we're going to reduce the load by tooth and you're going to reduce the load in all the grounds and all the the inlays and onlays by a, a a, a large amount. If you take a look at this chart and you share the load uh, that the manufacturer, that the, the literature tells about the different materials, if you share the load uh, between all the posterior teeth, you're going to work in a very safe band. The, 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 another issue that you have to, to, to talk about is about the edge to edge position. We have to have broad and flat contacts at the end to edge position because it, if you're going like this, we're going to share the load on the anteriors. What I mean, if you remember, uh, I said that we have around 100 newtons on the anteriors, but if you share the load at least in the two centrals, we're going to split this, this load in two teeth. So we reduce the, the probability of having problem by the half. That is, that is a very interesting concept. So if you, if you see, like in, this, like in this first diagram, if you see that you have concentration of contact in just one tooth, you have to work, you have to adjust sometimes the antagonist to share the load between more than one tooth. In every I think this principle works very well in anterior guidance and it works very well sometimes in the canine guidance because if you have a patient with signs of heavy attrition and you are doing a complex rehabilitation, if you let sometimes the end of your, of your lateral movement on only one tooth, you can have problems. If you split the load in two teeth, you can have more safe to work with the lateral movements. So the, we adjust the posterior part and then we adjust the anterior part and then we have to adjust the path between these two areas. So we have to have a smooth and broad pathways without any kind of obstacles. Obstacles can create a big problem for you because obstacles in the porcelain leads to stress concentration and stress concentration leads to failure. That's very important to avoid. That's why it's so important to have a very smooth transition, a very smooth and broad pathways between these two positions. And of course, this guidance pattern should avoid any kind of 
posterior tooth contact because this posterior put tooth contact will change the levering of the mandible and changing the levering of the mandible can create a lot of different kind of problems related with TMJ or related with musculature or related with the occlusion of the teeth. So smooth and bred pathways always, especially in these patients the, with the demonstrates problems, signs of attrition, we have to check in advance, we have to check before the treatment if she has any kind of crossover pattern. What, what I mean with crossover pattern? Uh, uh, crossover pattern show that the patient sometimes do, sometimes do some movement that are not functional, but they, they are uh, used to do it. It was very neuromuscular uh, related. It's not functional related, but he's used to, to do it. You can change all the guidance. You can change all the relationship uh, between the arch, between the, the, the the relationship with the teeth, but he can start going to that position again and can create problems for you. So we have to learn from the initial pattern of the uh, uh, pattern of the wear facets that the patient demonstrates and create uh, a new configuration of the occlusion that can resist to the pattern of occlusion of the patient. It's very important to create a design of restoration that can resist or that increases the probability of resistance uh, in the neuromuscular pattern of the patient. After that, we have to refine the, the, the occlusion adjustment, we refine in a different position because usually we do all this kind of adjustment with the patient lay down, but the patient doesn't work lay down. The patient usually sit to have a, a normal life. The patient sit and lean the, the head forward to have uh, their meals. So we have to adjust the patient in different positions, put, put in the articulating paper and asking the patient to chew. And then you have to refine the occlusion with the special rubbers the way I'm demonstrating here. So you sit the patient and you ask the patient to, to chew the articulating paper and here we can note, you can observe the different patterns, the different envelopes of function when the patient is laid down and the patient is sit. You can see here that when the patient is sit, you have a more vertical envelope of function, it's more anterior. So in the concept of centric, long centric of the patient that they need some liberty, some freedom of movement, we have to adjust the patient in these two positions. So how do we adjust that? We sit the patient, we put the articulating paper. If you note, if you observe some obstacle, we have to use the articulating paper. This articulating paper will mark the interference. So we have to use some rubber. I like to use rubber at that point because it's a very smooth uh, adjustment is a very uh, uh, thin, it's just a, a fine turning adjustment. So I use the, the rubber at this point and this, this rubber will just uh, around this internal angle and rounding this internal angle, we can, we, we're going to get rid of this obstacle and reduce the possibility of having any kind of fracture. How you can see, it's very nice to have parallel surface because even if the patient breaks in this edge to edge position, as the surfaces are parallel, we don't have any kind of stress concentration while he's doing this kind of lateral movement, lateral parafunctional movement. Very important to have all the surface very parallel to reduce the concentration of stress, okay? And after doing all of that, you have to recheck and have to polish it very carefully because if you don't polish, the porcelain will, will degrade very quickly. And if you don't polish, we have more stress concentration in the area of the, uh, in the incisor area. So here we can see the uh, just before and after. We can see that we have occlusal points in every posterior tooth, uh, we are sharing the load, that is very important, that will make the treatment last 
that's very important if you think about stability, that uh, about TMJ stability, occlusion stability, that's very important, you have to take care about that. Here the case and the, the center, you can see the case the beginning, and we can see the case after uh, on, on the patient in the occlusion and the patient in, at the edge to edge. We can see that the occlusal planes are properly related. And the good news about this treatment, the good news about this treatment, and we, we have, we did, we, we did this case some years ago, and the case is absolutely stable. We don't see in the control visits, we don't see any kind of chipping, any kind of complaints. The TMJ is working very well. It doesn't complain at all. Uh, I, in this kind of parafunction, in this kind of patients with that demonstrates the signs of attrition, I always recommend before taking all this kind of care with this adjustments, I always recommend a protection splint. I recommend a Michigan type splint the, for him to use during the night because we don't, we don't know how to control effectively for the long term this parafunctional activity, especially during the night. So here we can see the, the case in the beginning, the different views from his smile, different views from his profile from the beginning and after the orthognatic surgery and after our treatment is finished, different views from his new smile, and he wanted to have bigger teeth, he wanted to be whiter teeth, and he is very happy with the final result. This is the case in the beginning, the case, the final picture of the case. I really like to thank you for your attention.